Hey everyone, Texas Highwayman here. For those of you on the northeast side of San Antonio, and even anyone who just takes the occasional drive to New Braunfels, San Marcos, or Austin, you know that traffic on I-35 is bad, oftentimes really bad. But finally, after many years of studies and plans, work has started on a project to double deck I-35 on the northeast side. And in this video, I'll give you an overview of the I-35 Northeast Expansion, or I-35 NEX project. First, a little background and history. I-35 started off over 100 years ago as State Highway 2 and soon became US-81. In Bear County, it ran from Selma south along today's Old Austin Road and Randolph Boulevard to Austin Highway and into San Antonio from there. In 1955, the first section of expressway of what would become I-35 in Bear County opened between Selma and Topper Wine Road. This section included a full interchange at Pat Booker Road. South of Topper Wine, the original plans had the freeway continuing down what's now Randolph Boulevard, but reportedly land speculators drove up the land costs there, and so the state opted for today's route between Judson Road and Loop 410, which opened in 1957. The rest of the freeway between Loop 410 and downtown opened in the early 1960s, with the section between Walsham and Riddiman using an existing section of what was then Loop 13. Since then, most of I-35 on this side of town has been expanded. The section between Loop 410 Northeast and Loop 1604 was widened in the early 80s. That project also built the Loop 1604 Cloverleaf and rebuilt the Frat Interchange at Loop 410 Northeast in what was, at the time, the biggest project the Highway Department had ever undertaken. The section of 35 north of 1604 was expanded in the mid-90s and again in 2014, and the section between Loop 410 Northeast and the Loop 410 South Cutoff was expanded in 2018. With congestion a growing problem, the state undertook a major investment study in 1996 to determine possible solutions. Among other things, the study recommended barrier-separated express and HOV lanes. While some of the operational improvements recommended in that study did get implemented, funding was not available for the barrier-separated lanes. A follow-up study called the I-35 Planning and Environmental Linkages Study was completed in 2013 and evaluated a number of alternatives and, perhaps predictably, recommended an expansion of I-35 but it left the details of that expansion to be studied further. Due to chronic funding shortages for highways during the first decade or so of the 2000s, the expansion of I-35 was planned to be a toll project, where the new lanes would be tolled, but the existing lanes would remain free. It was during studies for this that double-decking the new lanes was determined to be the best option. With additional statewide funding for highways approved by voters in 2015, the toll component of this project was able to be dropped, meaning the new lanes would be toll-free, with one of those lanes being an HOV lane. HOV lanes are now considered for most freeway expansion projects in San Antonio, and previous studies had shown a significant rate of carpooling already in this corridor, so it was decided to include an HOV lane to continue to support and expand that carpooling. The entire I-35 NEX program runs from Walter Street to FM 1103. However, for funding and contracting purposes, it has been broken up into several smaller projects. The first phase, from Loop 410 Northeast to the Bear County Line, started construction in mid-2022 and is what I will elaborate more on later in this video. Although I call it Phase 1, TxDOT refers to it as the NEX Central Segment. Work started in June of 2022 and is expected to be complete in late 2027. It is being built as a design-build project, which means a single contractor was selected to complete the design, build it, and then maintain and operate it for a few years afterwards. Design-build contracts have some benefits since the design and construction periods can overlap and having a single contractor allows for some efficiencies. Phase 2, which TxDOT calls the NEX South segment, runs from Walter Street to Loop 410 Northeast and has been broken up into at least two separate projects, which I'm calling Phases 2A and 2B. The first, from Loop 410 Northeast to the Loop 410 South Cutoff, is currently expected to begin construction later this year. It will also be built as a design-build project. The rest of the South segment is currently tentatively scheduled to start in 2025. Phase 3, or what TxDOT calls the NEX North segment and runs from the Bear County line north to FM 1103, is currently tentatively planned for 2026. Okay, let's take a quick look at the cross sections. Here's the cross section for Phase 1. As I mentioned before, the new lanes will be elevated and the existing lanes will remain as is. This section will have three elevated lanes in each direction, with one of those lanes being an HOV lane. These lanes will be express lanes, meaning there will be limited entrances and exits. In the case of this section, you will be able to enter and leave the new lanes at the Bear County line, 
and from direct connectors to and from Loop 410 Northeast and Loop 1604 West of I-35. I'll show you those in more detail in a minute. Again, this first phase will run from Loop 410 Northeast to the county line, but this cross section will eventually extend south to Ritterman. Here's the cross section for the future phase south of Ritterman. Along here, there will be two express lanes, but no HOV lane. Access points will be at the southern end near Walter Street and to and from Loop 410 South. There will also be a southbound exit from the upper level to George Beach Avenue. North of the county line to FM 3009, there will be two elevated lanes, one general purpose express lane and one HOV lane. The elevated lanes will descend north of FM 3009, and this will be the cross section from there to FM 1103. By the way, according to Wikipedia, when completed, this should be the 14th longest road bridge in the world and fourth longest in the US. All right, it's time to look at the renderings of the first phase, which is now under construction. We're here at I-35 and Crestwind Drive, which is just north of Walsham Road. And this is about where phase one will end. Um, the upper levels will actually be built out to right around here and then they'll just end. Um, they'll kind of be left hanging in the air there. And then the future project will extend those further to the south as we've discussed uh, earlier in the video. Um, looking to the north here, we can see there are some flyovers connecting from the upper level over to the west. And these will be the uh, flyovers uh, or direct connectors from those upper levels to Loop 410 uh, northeast, headed over towards uh, the airport, North Star Mall, and so forth. Uh, three of those connectors will be located here, and we'll talk about the fourth one in just a minute. Uh, so we have the uh, northbound I-35 uh, upper level to westbound 410. We have the eastbound 410 connector to southbound 35 there southbound upper, upper level 35. And then here we have the eastbound loop 410 uh, connector to the upper level of northbound I-35. And as we head over here, just a little bit further to the west, you can see these connectors fly over a little street called Frat Road, which is in the uh, business park there between I-35 and loop 410. As a point of reference, here is the Cowboys Dance Hall. This building here in the middle is Cowboys Dance Hall. So we have loop 410 over here, I-35 over here, and we're kind of looking to the north. As you can see, these connectors then uh, head over to the left here, off to the west, and they will connect to Loop 410, descend down to Loop 410, and connect to Loop 410, uh, the main lanes there, by pair and vital. The fourth connector that I mentioned is from southbound I-35 upper level to westbound Loop 410, and it is way over here on the far side of the interchange. They originally wanted to put it over here with the other connectors, but they had uh, some issues getting the right-of-way over here, so they decided to go ahead and just put it over here uh, in the existing right-of-way on the north side of the interchange. And it essentially mirrors the existing connector today when you're headed from southbound 35 to Loop 410 westbound. Um, it just be a uh, kind of mirror it, but it'll just be a, quite a bit taller than the existing connector. And then again, it comes over here and continues to the west, uh, merging with this connector, and then headed over to Loop 410. We're going to fly over the interchange. Again, we're flying over Cowboys Dance Hall here to give you a point of reference. And you can see that connector from southbound I-35 to westbound Loop 410, the upper level that is. Again, the existing connector that's there today will remain and will continue to uh, serve traffic on the existing main lanes headed to westbound Loop 410. All the existing interchange ramps will remain essentially as they are today. All right, here we are, we pivot around to the north and we're gonna head uh, north, fly over I-35 here towards the north. Not a whole lot remarkable to talk about along this section, really it's just a uh, simple double deck section, just like we have downtown where you have the upper levels on each side and then the uh, lower level lanes uh, kind of in the middle. The existing main lanes along here, which will become the lower level lanes, uh, will remain pretty much as they are today. There won't be a, um, a whole lot of changes. And as a reminder, as we discussed earlier in the video, the upper levels along here will be express lanes, meaning there won't be any local exits. You'll only be able to exit to and from uh, Loop 410, Loop 1604, and then at the uh, very northern end of the upper levels, which will be at the county line, which we'll get to in a few minutes. And we're going to go ahead here as we pass O'Connor Road, we're going to go ahead and pause for a second. I'm going to point out this uh, bridge connecting the upper uh, lane, upper levels, uh, both sides of the upper level. This is an emergency service crossover, as you can see, and what this will be used for is in case uh, the upper level on one side or the other needs to be closed due to an incident such as a major crash or something along those lines. Um, the first responders then can open up uh, this crossover and that will allow traffic that's trapped on the upper level to uh, cross over to the other side and then continue on its way. 
um, or it can also be used by emergency services uh, if they need to cross over to reach an incident. Um, if you've been along I-10 in Louisiana between uh, Baton Rouge and Lafayette over the Atrafalea Swamp, uh, you've seen several of these um, and will function exactly the same way as those. There will be three of these in uh, along this project. This is the middle one. There'll be another one at I-35 uh, near Eisenhower Road. And then the northern one will be uh, near Olympia Parkway, which will actually be built as part of this project as well. And we'll see that here in just a minute. All right, continuing to the north, I'll point out, uh, again, we have two general purpose lanes in each direction, as well as an HOV lane on the inside. Go ahead and pause right here for a minute and point out here on this southbound upper level side, you see there's a stub here. And what this will be, is this will be a connector from coming from Pat Booker Road and from Loop 1604 over here uh, towards the east. Uh, we'll come around and then connect to the southbound I-35 upper level. That will be built as part of a future project, probably the third or fourth phase of this project. But they're leaving the stub for it now. And then again, as we continue a little further to the north, you can see the same situation here on the northbound I-35 upper level. Again, this will be the exit then for Pat Booker Road, as well as a connector to connect to Loop 1604, headed southbound, going over towards Randolph Air Force Base, Converse, and so forth. We continue to fly to the north, and here we're approaching the Loop 1604 interchange. As you can see, there will be flyovers from the upper levels to Loop 1604 to the west of I-35. These will be built as part of this first, uh, the first phase of this project here. Uh, so we'll have a northbound I-35 upper level to Loop 1604 westbound. We'll have southbound I-35 upper level to Loop 1604 westbound. And then we'll have eastbound Loop 1604 connectors to the upper levels of I-35 southbound as well as northbound. And those will be built as part of this project, as I mentioned. As you can see here, they continue off to the west and they will descend down and connect to Loop 1604 somewhere in the Lookout Road, Nacogdoches Road area. The existing cloverleaf interchange down here will remain as it is today and will continue to service uh, the existing main lanes, uh, essentially the lower levels uh, going forward. As you can see, as we continue our fly over the interchange, you can see those cloverleaf ramps are still in use. All right, we're going to pivot around and continue to the north, passing the Forum. All right, and as we pass Olympia Parkway, we'll point out here another one of those emergency services crossover. This will be the third one, the furthest north one. All right, and as we approach Cibolo Creek, I'm going to go ahead and pause here and point out, again, we have another stub here on the upper level. And what this is, is this is where the upper level will end as part of phase one here. And so as you can see kind of in the distance here, the upper level uh, continues to the north and descends down to I-35 and merges to I-35 right around Cibolo Creek. And we'll see that in more detail in just a minute. Uh, but this stub here then will be for a future extension of the upper levels to continue to the north. They'll continue from here north all the way up to just past the FM3009. So that will be built as part of a laser, later phase as well. And so they're gonna leave the stub here for that. So then as we fly further to the north here, you can see the, uh, upper, uh, the northbound uh, upper level lanes descending down to I-35, and then they'll merge the, uh, onto the I-35 main lanes here right before Cibolo Creek onto the right-hand side here. And there will be an extra lane then added to I-35 to the main lanes, uh, continuing north from here all the way up to FM3009. Three double oh nine to help accommodate that traffic. On the southbound side, you'll see here on the right-hand side, um, you'll see a, a ramp coming up from the lower level or from the I-35 main lanes. And this will be where if you're headed southbound on I-35, you'll be able to get onto that upper level uh, right after you're, or right as you're crossing Cibolo Creek. Now we'll come up here on the right-hand side uh, and then merge to the I-35 upper level and head south from there. And then as we continue further to the north, as we cross Cibolo Creek, then you can see where that I-35 southbound upper level will end as part of this first phase. Again, it'll be uh, kind of hanging up there in the air, um, 
it won't be used by any traffic, uh, but that's where they will then uh, connect to it uh, to continue further north as part of a later phase. And as we continue to fly over I-35 main lanes here, you can see they've added an additional main lane to the north, and that will drop off then at uh, FM3009. Now let's wrap up by taking a short look at what it will look like from the existing main lanes. If you'd like more information about this project, including the detailed schematics, head over to my website at texashighwayman.com. So there you go. Now you know what the I-35 NEX project is and what's coming to I-35 on the northeast side. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please hit the like button and also the subscribe button and consider supporting this channel by buying me a coffee at coffee.com. I'll include the link in the description below. And for more details on this project or other highway projects around San Antonio, or to learn more about San Antonio's roads and highways and their history, be sure to check out my website at texashighwayman.com. Until next time, drive safely.